My audio messed up. You're good. I'm you good. Straight? Yeah. What's up, y'all? It's Marty A. Johnson up. show on Thursday. Let me get my days of the week together. Look, we're live. Anything can happen. The panel's already here. Um, Lavelle said, Charlene is not taking that perfect attendance title from him at all. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Lavelle, so your background's good. Your audio's good. Um, are you a fan of the intros or no? I'm I'm a fan of intro, but my brother's a, even a bigger fan. Your brother is? Yeah. You okay. know, he's the R&B head. So I love him too. He's a bee, he's a beehiver. <laughs> no, but he um, but I love the yeah, I do love this group. I do love this group. You even know the group. I don't know him as well as I want to know him, but I'm familiar with the group. Very familiar with the group. Charlene, is this your era right here, Charlene? Yes. Had them all on my wall. On your wall? Yes. You yeah. old school. You posters on my wall. Yeah. Charlene's old. Oh, I don't even think I was born yet. <laughs> whatever, whatever. I graduated in '93. Hey. I was born. Lavelle, <laughs> Lavelle, was you born back then? Yeah, I was born in '93. <laughs> oh, so you're not, you're not no stranger. Oh to my me. gosh, you do make me feel old, Bell. <laughs> what you calling, Bell? Yeah, you do make me feel old. But let me, let me go ahead and let him in because they're gonna think I'm, I ain't on time and all that stuff. So, am I froze up? Make sure all my audio is good. You good? What's your favorite joint from our intro? Come inside. Man. Well, that's the only one, you know, what about Let Me Be, Rhythm in the Sky? Yeah, I, I know all of those, but that one is my favorite. That one in their remake of Ribbon in the Sky. Those so, you know, when we think of that, you know what we think of? Stevie Stevie. No, we think of Come Inside, I think of Skeet Skeet. <laughs> oh, Come Inside. <laughs> I do. I that's really a banger. Do. That's that one. I mean, that's my favorite too, and I hate it because I wanted me and Charlene to have different favorites, but it's, it is what it is. It's your heart. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me fix my my damn setting. So my my apologies. I'm old today. I'm live. Anything can happen because Lavelle would text me in two seconds. But um, I'm gonna let him in in a minute. Okay, Lavelle, they grown here. They're super grown, and um, I'm still gonna tap in. So if you're an artist, sing your heat to me. Where um, Charlene. Uh, Marty, Marty A. Johnson 4. At what? AOL.com? Let me help her out. Marty A. Johnson 4. I'm, I'm, I'm multitasking right here. Make sure Marty they Number 4 at gmail.com, you guys. Please. Please. Okay, let me let, me let our guests in for their thing. Um, we on CP time. I'm, I'm fixing my stuff in the meantime. So bear with me. We are live and share this with your boy because it is 7.30 on the dot. So let me get my stuff together. Look, I hope, look, it will be two people in the group. So let me make sure they're here. Otherwise, I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> so let me, um, no, let me get my introduction together because they, they're from the era where music is really, really good music. Perfect. What up, bro? Let me get my, let me get my nice intro together for, for the guys. Okay, I'm going to put it on together, but I'm glad. I hope they did their research on this little platform. But um, <laughs> for 10 minutes, like just now. In music, when people actually bought bought records, they um they paid the way for a lot of these groups out yeah. there. They're one of the few groups that gave originality, vocals, showmanship. Thank you. How's the lighting up here? Dominate the charts. So we definitely got intro there here on the Marty A. John show. Look, the members are here. I'll make sure they're gonna be here. What's up, y'all? I'm Marty, in case you don't know. What up, Marty? How you doing, man? Okay, so so who's who? Who's who's buddy? Who's Jeff? So we can jump right into it. Just Jeff right here. Yeah. I'm gonna give you some more light up in here. Please. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> I'm gonna say we're talking with platinum plaques and y'all on dial-up service. <laughs> <laughs> Other, what's going on here? <laughs> No, I'm first. I want to say I I definitely appreciate y'all coming in with us and chopping it up for a little bit. So I see y'all been making y'all rounds on different platforms separately. Um, my only request was if they ain't coming together, I don't want to do it. <laughs> uh huh. Serious. That's what's no. up. And I hope I hope you I hope I hope y'all did y'all little research on us. So 
This is our tribute to the 90s edition where we try to honor all our legends because you guys are legends, the kings and queens that paved the way for so many people. And on my little platform, I have my panelists. One is a wannabe singer, the girl here. <laughs> and the one here is an entrepreneur. <laughs> that girl can sing. So, hold on. Before I get started, where y'all at right now? We're in the, the studio. Lab, <laughs> We're in the studio. <laughs> Okay, where's the studio at? Y'all in um, New York? Y'all in Jersey? Where y'all at? We're in Long Island. We're in New York. Long Island, New York. Oh. Nice. So y'all got some y'all got some exclusive records y'all gonna let me hear in, in a moment? I hope so. We just did this a second ago. Oh. I was waiting for you to come on, like five minutes ago. Okay, before we get this, uh, let me hear yeah. that. Let me hear uh, something. What's that? Look, before we even get started, if you got some exclusive you want to share with us, this all, we're all about the exclusive here. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the age of the NFTs, so all the exclusive okay. stuff is like all the, NF, all the exclusive stuff is getting NFT. But no worries. So look, let's say, jump right. You guys, the intro. I've seen um, you guys been hitting the stage recently, even po post pandemic. So first off, how y'all been making out this past year with this whole world trying to open back up and everything? Search someone taking through that. <laughs> um, yo, we just been like um, following the rules, man. Like, we ain't gonna go around and acting stupid and, and avoid like what's going on. You know, it's real. We lost friends. You know, we we trying to keep our family safe and ourselves. And you know, it's a blessing to have that window open to get out and hit the stage again because being locked down for a year and a half is no joke. It was it was absolutely crazy. Cool. And. Right now, Long Island, well, New York is like one of the main meccas of music, stuff like that. So take someone take me back. <clears throat> Let me know, because I did I did my exclusive research on, on y'all. I want deep, deep in the roots, get all the information. On this platform, we like to celebrate y'all, and I'm very nosy. So we don't have interviews. It's just, good, <laughs> it's, just it's just good, good conversation. So look, I know one of y'all was from um, Fort Bragg, Fayette. Now I'm shout out to Fayetteville, because I'm in North Carolina. I'm in um be in North Carolina next weekend. I know, and um I'm gonna be there too. Where we y'all at? Lola, <laughs> where is that? Carolina. Yeah. So yeah. um, tell me how y'all all come together. Oh man, by fate, man. Like the, you know, a lot of some groups of record companies put them together. Put the, you know, record companies put the groups together. We kind of just fell into each other's hands. Like yo, it's like it was supposed to happen. Like the energy is just crazy. I met Kenny in North Carolina, mm -hmm. knew Jeff from Queens, and everybody had the same interests and desires and, I guess, goals. You know, my, my initial goals wasn't to be a singer. I just wanted to be, like, a, a hip-hop producer and probably a rapper. But um, meeting Kenny and him singing and, you know, that kind of got me more into singing and stuff. And, um, yeah, and... Jeff, hey, Jeff, you asked Kenny, he would have his own view on it, and Jeff have his own own view. It's too. just like the Temptations, man. Like, you know, when they first got together, yo, man, you want to join my group? Or oh, you want to join my group? Yeah. <laughs> it was like that, kind of, yeah. sort of. But at the end of the day, man, it was like fate. Like, it was, fate brought us together, bro. Like, okay. we all had the same ideas, the same plan. It fell into place so good, man. Like, regardless how it came together, it was God. It was God. My bad. So, so y'all came together. Take me through the process of uh, meeting um, DJ Eddie F. Rest in peace to Devin Kenny and the late great Heavy D. Take me through that process of where y'all met. Who do y'all met first, Heavy D or um, DJ um, Eddie F? Who do y'all meet first through that process? It's crazy because I met Eddie F. years ago through one of my friends in the army, but I didn't even speak music to him. I actually okay. just brought them to one of their shows at the University of Massachusetts up in Amherst. I didn't talk music because I had no music to talk about at the time. Like, you know, it wasn't, there was no intro or nothing. But Jeff could fast forward to Jeff. He could tell you the story of how we met Hev. So, so Puffy, AKA P. Diddy, P. Diddy. Um, yes. Sean Combs was like a big promoter, a party promoter here in New York uh, with okay. Jessica Rosenbaum. And um, it was this club called the Red Zone, yo. And it was like the most popular club in New York at the time. And um, I know Joe T already just came out with Ever My Lady and, and you know, the party was just popping. I said, yo, let's go to this club called the Red Zone. Okay. I know a lot of, know a lot of security, we ain't gotta pay to get in. 
we all rolled in there, man, and everybody's looking at us like, who this dude's coming in here? We, we wasn't even signed yet. So we end up getting upstairs and we met Heavy D. Just to make a long story short, Heavy D was standing next to Andre Harrell mm -hmm. and we approached Heavy D. And we, we happened to be singing his song on the way to the club. So when we saw him, we was like, yo, this is another one of those aha uh -huh minutes, like where things was just falling in place. And we went up to him and was like, yo, man, we was just singing your song on the way out here. So it's like, let me hear what y'all got. And we sang his song, Peaceful Journey, that song that he did with Jodeci. Mm -hmm. And um, he was like, yo, give me your number. And uh, from we, there. It, but hold on, we thought he wasn't going to call, all right? Yeah. He was like, he ain't going to call. Yeah. <laughs> So y'all actually got signed to um, the major label. Take me back to that that process because you guys just um, y'all was in the era when people actually bought records. People used to spend their lunch money, me, um, on music and CDs. Charlene with tapes and all that stuff. Um, when y'all got your first deal, was the money situation really really tight? Because people said we sell a million records. Was the money situation good in the beginning? Um, well, we remember we were writing and producing before the record deal. So by the time we got our deal, we, financially, we was pretty straight already. Um, so we, we, we were more excited about getting a deal as a group and stuff because we didn't know that that was going to happen. You know, even though we were working together, we thought we were going to go ahead and bounce off of the success of the Mary J. Blige songs and right. start just writing for everybody and writing for everybody. Then um, Atlantic heard the work that we was doing for other people, and that's how they offered us the recording deal for the, for the group intro. And, um, it, you know... It's, it's a blessing and a curse. Had we not did intro, we probably would have been on like a hundred more albums. But at the same time, you know, we wouldn't trade the experience for, for that anyway. You know, it was supposed to happen. You get a bigger check writing too, a bigger check. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh -oh. Um, I like the idea of your group here is, huh. Kenny might have been the lead, but everyone played their part in the group. There wasn't no egos at the time. Um, so who was like the choreographer? Who was the singer? I mean, who was the producer? Cause I, I, I don't remember who, but from what I hear that you guys pretty much, pretty much played the position of the team to make the group situation work versus putting the egos in check. So who was like the in charge of the choreography? Who was the producer? Stuff like that. Cause that's what I heard. Is that true? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely could not dance. <laughs> I had two left feet. Anybody would tell you I, I had two left feet. Like my family saw me on Soul Train. They was like, we couldn't believe we seen you dancing. <laughs> um, initially, I started doing doing the tracks for like our demos and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we signed on to a production uh, deal. So as far as on the first album, I didn't get any production. I didn't come into play as a producer on the actual albums. But my role in the group at first was to do the music. Kenny was a songwriter and collectively we were, we were the vocalists. We wanted to be like the take six or commission type of harmony group. I want to add on to that. So even though Buddy said that he didn't get any production credit, technically you did because I'm gonna tell you why. When we was creating songs, when you was at the piano, finding the notes, all that stuff, that constructed our harmonies. So if you listen to our harmonies, our stuff didn't sound like nobody else. Right. It didn't like nobody else. So Buddy came with the melodies and things like that. Kenny was start, yo, that's dope, that's dope. And he started writing the songs. And Kenny was so fast with the pen, man. And it's like, everything worked for the good, bro. And it's like, the dancing thing, for me, I was always like a hip hop battle dancer back in the day. And I thought that, you know, yo, we got some dope ideas. We Everybody thought we was rappers anyway when they first saw us, yeah. you know? Look. Yeah, the music, the dancing, the look, everything mm -hmm. just fell in place. A half an hour ago, we was in dance rehearsal. Yeah, literally a half an hour ago. We, 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 just, we just came back from rehearsal dancing. Can I tell you something? Yo. Don't take this the wrong way. I've been, look, I was a youngin back then, but honestly, don't be mad, I'm gonna say this. I didn't even know none of y'all names. I just knew the music. Yo, I'm the exact Seriously. same. Seriously, I, I didn't know none of the group members. Like I, just knew, I just knew the music. One of my favorite groups is the Brand New Heavies. And I can't tell you one person in the Brand New Heavies. I can't tell you. <laughs> I definitely one of my favorite cool. groups. I know their songs, but I don't know one of the members. I just found out who the lead singer of Sade is. Who is it? Yeah. Who's the lead singer of Sade? I thought Sade Love Room, something like that. Helen. <laughs> Helen, look, I know. Helen is the lead singer of Sade. Sade, Sade is the band. Sade is the band. <laughs> and the, the girl singing in front, her name is Helen. Wow. Is it Casey? Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. So we don't know. Like, 
who picked the singles um, when y'all doing the first album? Is it the label situation? <laughs> who, who picked on, on what? We had 100% creative control. On that first album, we went on NDF's back porch yep. with an artist named Supercat. It was a Sunday. A reggae artist named Supercat was oh. over at NDF's house. Okay, and we, we just played records and pretty much Supercat picked the records. You know, and of course, Eddie put him in the order and stuff. He was like, yeah, I'm on that one right there, I'm on that one right there. <laughs> and, you know. Great and, stuff. Uh, What's some of your high, your best times during that during that stint with the first album? So I know y'all was young, single, getting a lot of poom poom back in the day from the groupies. <laughs> no, we grown here. We friends now. We talk, <laughs> real, talk, talk, so we talk real talk. Was it was it everything that you, you thought it was going to be? Uh, I want to say the anticipation part was probably the most nerve wracking part for me okay. like mm -hmm. i saw everything happening so fast i was like oh my god yo this is about to be crazy and then when i go back home to the neighborhood they don't really see it happening yet you know you'll tell your family oh you know we got a song coming out they, yeah right well, whatever yeah. Yeah. whatever i said okay mm -hmm. so when, when stuff was happening it was getting scary every day it was, it was yeah. so great but it was scary i was living in brooklyn at the time and um I can remember just sitting on my front steps and cars driving by, blasting love thing, and let me be the one. And and people just walking by me right on the porch, and they, they had no idea it was my song. I remember being on the line in the club. We wasn't even out yet. I was single, had just hit local radio. Mm -hmm. and I hear people in line saying, "Yo, you heard about this new group called this new group called Intro?" Right I was there. like, "Oh shit, they talking about us?" That was like, <laughs> yeah, that was cool. It happened right pretty. It was a lot of work that went on before it happened. But once okay. Eddie got the ball rolling, the ball started rolling. Like from our first meeting with him, maybe three days later, we were in the studio with Jeff Red. Five five days after that, we were in the studio with uh, uh, Dave Hall. And then he's introducing us to these guys. And then Mary pops up, this girl who has a record on the radio called Real Love. And he puts us in the studio with her. And it just don't stop. Here come the wine. And here come Christopher Williams. Wow. And we had we had went to the ASCAP uh, Music Awards and it was a, a a designer named Carl Kanad. He gave us some some short sets, so we all had on the same colorful short sets. And we go into the ASCAP Songwriting Awards and some people went in tuxedos and suits and everything. And here we come and they looking at us like, who's these three guys dressed <laughs> up like? like Excuse me, somebody like said the yeah. Three Stooges. <laughs> yeah, we just came in. We just rolled in like the Three Stooges. Make a long story short, the next year we was back in there grabbing awards. So um, it was, uh, that was like most the most exciting time was really, really at the beginning. And um, we really didn't have anybody's path to follow. Like I didn't have anybody in the music business in my family. So I didn't know like about a promotional tour or high school tours and all this other stuff. I just, you know, knew that the record company said they're going to put out this cassette because there was no CDs yet. They're going to put out great. a cassette. In a, in a 12 inch record, and we'll see what happens with Neil. Let's take it from there. Latin yeah. status. Was y'all pissed that Kenny was singing everything lead on the first album? No, that oh, was planned. Not. He had to. <laughs> he had to. I wasn't. No, that was planned. We wasn't trying to, you all want to sing this song. No. When you, when you come to our shows gonna... now, what, what we're doing now, and I can speak for Jeff, we, we couldn't do back then in 93, 94. It took, it took a, a lot of progression and a lot of learning from Kenny, a lot of mimicking the work that he's done and going back to our albums. Long and, story short, Kenny, yeah. Kenny was very intimidating yeah. vocally. Like he he was so great. Yeah. Like, where did he come from again? Yeah. Like he was that great. Yeah, we, we actually was encouraging him after the first album to do a solo album in the middle of the second album. That way we could just generate more revenue and stuff like that. But he's like, nah, I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and get into the second album. But um, that's what that was kind of like the the norm back then, you do the, do the group album, and then the lead singer would do a solo album, and right. then come back and do the group album. Sometimes they don't come back to the group, but <laughs> we, we, we couldn't talk them into it. I think that would have been um, a really good album, one another classic album. Mm -hmm. Nice. For those who's late for the Marty A. Johnson show, it's still our tribute to the 90s. Um, this week, we got the platinum selling artists intro. They got definitely got a lot of hits. We got... um. Jeff and Buddy, they are definitely here together. Intro, yeah. Better known as Intro. Okay, innovator, new talent, reaching out. How you know that? Come on no, now, this is Marty A. Johnson show. I do my research. All right, bro. You yeah, got it. This is Marty A. Johnson show. Look, I'm, 
Don't worry, I'm gonna get to the good stuff in a minute. <laughs> Is that, right. that correct? Excuse uh, the time. Like I said, we just finished dancing a, little, a few minutes ago, so. Your mom's good okay. friends now, so you relax, <laughs> buckle uh, up. Um, so the first album, a lot of success and all that. Immediately that y'all want, they want y'all to go back in. Um, well, we toured for two years. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Stop. Yeah, we so, met two right. Christmas, two Thanksgivings. <laughs> yeah, on the road working. Yeah, yeah. It's like let's go get them, pull them off the road. It was Doug Morris. He made um, famous agency pull us off the road so we could come back in and, and do the second album. Yeah. Mm. Um, Kenny, Kenny's dad, his pops passed during that time, and it came like like a um, quote unquote unofficial gospel album, like completely left field. When you go platinum, sometimes with us black folks, we don't like change. <laughs> I know the that. ladies, the ladies want to hear "Come Inside." They want to get moist. You know, people want to hear "Let Me Be the One." This is this is real talk here. Um, from from when I posted, some of your fans told me they loved the guys. They was disappointed in the first album. Plus, at the same time, I was. They said because this is before my time. Some of my aunties told me they was pissed because correct me if I'm wrong. At the time, the label showed less attention to y'all. And this is when the, when Tony was hot and the sisters came in, the Braxton girls, they showed more attention to um them and not y'all is that correct i would that's how it appeared that's so a, that's how it appeared to talk real talk we friends now but the a yeah was brain yeah the a &R &R was, brothers he was tony, tony braxton's, braxton's boyfriend yeah. so okay. you know oh you know so he's dating tony braxton he signs her sisters to the label we're in the studio at the same time as them I felt like we weren't getting the attention that we needed. He didn't work on our first album, so his heart wasn't really a part of our success or our progress. And you know, we took it from there. I actually sat in a meeting with him one time and tried to try to, to pick pick his brain, like, what are you doing? And he pulled a baseball bat out on me. Yeah. Oh. He pulled the baseball bat and started smacking it in his hand, like if you want to hit me or something. I, I would have shoot, go ahead and hit me. I have never had to sing another song for the rest of my life. Yeah. I'm so I'm suing everybody. I would have took so that too. That hit me right here across the head with that bat. Wow. My name, my last name would have been Buddy Atlantic. Right. I'm, I'm, suing. <laughs> I'm suing everybody. But everybody. Before, I'm I sorry, was... before I go into the second album and get real nosy, tell me about um Ribbon in the Sky and Stevie Wonder. Oh, that was a great time. We went out, we shot the video. Mm -hmm. Um, I was homesick. So I got back on the plane, came back to New York. As soon as I get home, my mother says, Kenny called. He said, give him a call at the hotel. It's very important. I called Kenny. Kenny's like, you shouldn't have went home. We're going to meet Stevie Wonder in the morning. I'm getting right back on that plane. Sure. Yeah. That's exactly what I did. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But I got, a, I got another story to add to that, what though. Add to it. So we was in the studio. We finally got, um, Andre, what is it, Andre Crouch? No, no, no. Um, James Cleveland. James son, Cleveland's son, Andre. Yeah actually took us over to Stevie, Stevie uh, Wonder Studio. When we got there, it was all love, man. He had this air hockey table in his um, studio. I'm playing air hockey with Stevie. How did he bust my ass in two games? <laughs> and I'm playing for real. It's the truth. Literally bust my ass in air hockey. I, I said, you are not blind. <laughs> you are not blind. This is no way you can beat me, but yeah. he really did. He made it a phenomenal day for <laughs> He, he knew that it was a big deal for us to meet him. And um, he invited over Terrence Trent Darby and Johnny Gill. And he was like, hey, guys, let's, let's, let's do a song together. So here we go. He sets up the studio with his mics in a, all circle. In a circle. And we stand in there recording a song with Stevie Wonder. I'm nervous as hell because I'm standing right next to Stevie. And I was like, yeah. if I hit the note wrong, if he can beat <laughs> me in air hockey, he definitely going to hit the note wrong. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. But we did that song for... Um, all Men and Brothers album produced by um, Eric Clapton. That was a song called um, I'm the One Who Loves You. It was actually a tribute to Curtis Mayfield. Yeah. yeah. Nice. That was pretty cool. Definitely cool. That was our experience meeting him. And um, they've done some tributes to him, which I, I would have loved to have been to. Like at the Lincoln Center, I think they did a tribute to him. So anybody that comes across this show and y'all doing some Stevie Wonder tributes or birthday parties or anything for our dude, you know, holler at us. Yeah. We're, we're right. reachable now. This is the day of the internet. We came out, there was no internet. There was no Facebook. There was no Instagram. It's just word of mouth, you know. 
Wow. Not even cell phones. I don't think we had a cell phone. No, we, we didn't have a cell phone until maybe a pager back then. We had we had Skytel in the in the two ways. And then the first cell phone that I had was about the size of this thing. It was like took up the whole side of my head. And yeah. then I had to carry it around with a bag. And then the Motorola flip phones came out. We yeah. had those. Yeah, that was later on. <laughs> that was like 94, 95. Wow, oh, you don't know nothing about that. That's a good time. So it's the second second album. So hmm. I'm gonna say it. The label played y'all. It was showing attention to them girls instead. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'll say it for you. The label the label played y'all, but um, it sound. Cause I, I listened to the, I listened to the music before um, y'all came on. I did everything today because it sound more unofficially gospel. Am I right? It more it felt more gospel. Definitely a gospel song. It was a dedication to Kenny's dad, but if you listen to the words, you can also hear Kenny's ordeal throughout the album as well, like what he was going through personally and some of those songs like New Life and Spending My Life With You, um, my song. Yeah, um, yeah it's like he, he left a lot of messages in there for everybody, you know, left a lot of gifts in there. And, I, and to tell you the truth, I was just like the listeners. I was kind of tight too because I wanted – another album number one you know i wanted to let me be the one the love thing Just come band, inside band timing. you know but yeah it's time and so what's what satisfied me somewhat was funny how time flies and it feels like the first time those those two songs right there and Strong um, out. my love is on the way Strong out was my yeah i need your kids he was 16 years old when he did that record for us wow you guys you guys stay busy and working and all that stuff um, but then I heard y'all did some recording and all that, but the third album never really, really got released. Is, is that like in, in a vault right now, all that material and stuff? Pretty much. A lot of stuff. Yeah. So y'all not even gonna try, so y'all not even gonna try to send it out to the masses at all. You know what we said we wanted to wait for the right vehicle okay. to come along. We just don't want to put songs out there because we experimented with putting songs out there and stuff. None of the real the none of the real good stuff. I said we dropped some appetizers. But um, we want a real a vehicle, you know. If, if the label wants to give us a deal for the for those masters and for those copies of those songs, and they put them out on a real vehicle, you know, we don't want to put them on just mass transit. We want to put them in the Maybach and everything, and it be pretty and packaged. So um, do it right. If this NFT route is is kind of like the way to go, and you do it on one song. I still don't know a lot about it, but I'm hearing a lot of good things about it, and um, the songs will get out. They will. A lot of them got leaked. I don't know how. I think it was the engineers that were in the studio with us. But um, if I do find out, we'll, we'll, you know, they're out there now. So we just hope, at this point, we just hope people, the songs that they get leaked, we hope people like them and, you know, it's an extension of us. Mm -hmm. Our number one thing is, you know, we I just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And God, God, again, God bless, God bless Kenny. So when he passed, when didn't, how did that really hurt the um the brand? You know, he was the voice and all that. It seemed like y'all went through a lot from from that little stint. So take take me to, to that during that time after the fact. After the passing. Yes. Um we just started doing different things. Mm -hmm. Jeff, I think Jeff built a restaurant and a studio. Mm -hmm. I built a studio and just started working in the studio with other people, other artists. And um, as far as intro, we just fell back. And the timing was, I'm not gonna say the timing was right for us to fall back, but that was right at the emergence of, of hip hop. Mm -hmm. so 90s R&B wasn't really the it thing at that time. Mm -hmm. So it was easy for us just to just to fall back and go into the corners and, you know, and get back to our regular lives. And, um, okay. you know. Well, here's what, here's what I heard. After you sell a million records, um, reality hits. From what I hear, buddy, you you just retired from 17 years being a um, NYC police officer. Is that true? Um, I haven't retired yet. I'm, I'm well, still, I'm still you a police officer. I don't know if you retired. I know they said you do almost 20 years. Right. Well, I'm on an undercover assignment right now, so I'll probably <laughs> end up dead tonight. Thanks for blowing it up. Nobody really knows that. Except for you. Well, you job for show. I, I, think my <laughs> very I don't care if you get killed out there. <laughs> no. That's good. No, I mean, I, I had a great time serving my city. I, like, I, like you said, yeah, I've been here for 17 years. It's been a good time. You know, uh, my thing is um, relationships between the community and the police. That's that's my whole big thing. I'm not out there trying to, 
save the world. You know, if I see somebody choking, I'm going to minister first aid. But, you know, I, I'm not the type of person that just ride around and look for stuff. You know, you don't see firefighters driving around looking for fires. So that's how, that's the approach that I take. And, yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Um, two people in the group. Um, I have someone that does the show with me sometimes. My panel, the Bell and Charlene. I don't know which end they're on. They come and do the show with me sometimes. You two have fallen outs. You two have, I'm gonna say, creative differences. Um, how do you two pretty much work it out? Because um, sometimes, how, how do you do that? Because um, it's hard, especially even with two people in the group. How do y'all do y'all um, create differences? We all have like- I have, let, me, let me tell you something. Any fallout I had with him, I had a fallout out with my blood brother, mm -hmm. my cousin, my uncles. And guess what? That eventually fades away. You know, like you don't hold on. Anybody that holds on to a grudge so long, it's actually hurting themselves. So some, you know, you have to you have to be the bigger person and be like, you know what? Okay, I'm not mad no more. Mm -hmm. we, right. We, I think we never agree on anything. Okay. But then we end up coming with, up with a solution that's even doper than the original ideas. It's like, Okay. As soon as Jeff puts something on the table, then I'm always countering it because I want it to be better. And okay. then I put something on the table that he counters it to make me think more. It's like we we're constantly challenging each other to to be better. And I think that's why that's why we back out there. I never thought promoters would call for intro again. Okay. And we're damn near working every weekend now. You know. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's just a blessing, and uh, you know, like Jeff said, it's a brotherhood. No. It is. Family, family does that. You two are like you two are family. Basically, y'all want to roll and stuff like that. But um, I got a bone to pick with you two. We've been through so much. I got a bone to pick with both of y'all. I'm glad I'm glad y'all here. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Let me take a deep breath. <laughs> I got a I got a bone. I got a bone to pick with intro already. And I'm gl I'm glad y'all here. Okay. It, it's, it's, it's good and it's not good. First All off, right. let me shout out my guys, H Town, Shazam and GI. They lost their lead singer. Um, them boys kept that train moving. What I don't, the bone I had to pick about y'all, I don't know why you brought Pookie onto the group, because you boys can hold your own. Oh, you somehow. And I'm giving y'all the ultimate compliment. You All guys right. can hold your own. Don't bring Pookie in there, because you two can hold your own regardless. You two are <laughs> intro. They going. You know, we tried, man. Just yeah, I didn't like that. I hear you. But I like it's just y'all. Y'all don't need to bring no one else on. I didn't like when y'all did that, because you guys can hold your own, and I'm getting that. And for real, that's a that's, I'm giving, that's really a compliment because some you. people really can't do it, can't do it. Because now when I seen some of the old, the old and current clips with you two, I said, oh, okay. Because on this show, I tell like it is. I'm not a good actor. I said, okay, he can hold the vocals, he can hold his notes. He ain't he ain't like grandpa out of breath. And I'm like, you guys still got it, Appreciate and and, and I, I I like that so. Does it feel good now just to get that resurgent again with the phone ringing? Did y'all can sing them hits? Does, does it feel good? I mean, it's first first to say that. Absolutely, it's bittersweet because we're always looking around, you know. So we always used to, for that third person on stage to be vibing with us and stuff. But it's, it's so it's so dope and it's such a blessing to be able to still go out and support your family, doing what you love, and. Um, Oh, we're live! Hey, now this is live. <laughs> what happened? What happened, Jeff? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> First of all, are you okay? We're live now. It, it could have just busted. You okay? And everything. The mics could have went. It could have been so much worse. It could have been so much worse. Keep going. Keep talking. Keep talking. Okay, we're here. We're here. We're live. Anything can happen. You're okay. Why are you calling nine one one? No. Yo, that calling. shit was hilarious. Jeff's calling his attorney. He ain't calling 911. <laughs> I don't sue people. He don't, no he don't call 911. I'm the king of suing. <laughs> okay. okay, we're back. No worries. The bloop, um, yo, you got to play the bloopers tonight, though. Don't worry. <laughs> it, it, it will be on there. Don't worry. <laughs> Nothing broke, though. That's the amazing thing. The mic could have went into the albums or the MPC or the studio. Okay, we're back. So, okay, y'all good compliments. <laughs> yeah, I don't hear no new music. I don't. When we have legends like y'all, mm -hmm. I don't want, I want to hear the classics. I want to hear the hits. 
I don't want to hear nothing new. I'm going to the bathroom at the show. That's what we do now. Because we, we we tried that before, throwing in a song a song on that nobody knows. And they just start looking around like, okay, when is the next song coming that we're familiar with? So that's what we do. We do what we do straight classics. Fans want to hit a hit show. Love Fans, thing. Yeah. Let me be the one. Come Ribbon inside. in the sky. Come inside. If we, if we got extra time to kill, we'll throw in so many reasons or don't leave me. But it's pretty much just the classics. It's not, you know. Changing faces, different in this show too. Them girls said, um, well, on set two separate occasions, they said they ain't doing no, no new music. They won't get that check from for the hits. Mm -hmm. But we we will be doing a song with them probably within the next two weeks. Okay, so, well, it's just the same. Of changing faces because you know them sure. girls they they both been on the show. Cassandra been on the show, Sheree sure. been on the show, and both of them got two other girls plugged in, calling they both changing faces. So which interchanging faces are you gonna do one with? Uh, Sheree side or Cassandra side? We've toured with Sharice and, and her, that's a cousin, right? Her Renee? Cousin. Renee, yeah. They, and they do an awesome show. They, and they they're really, going to be they gonna be with y'all next week. They're, mm -hmm. next, they're with us next week in Orlando, yes. She knows me. <laughs> uh, I do. Yeah. Um, Rest in peace to Tabitha, uh, mom. You know, Tabitha Duncan from Cut Close, her mom yeah. passed away today. So we're praying for yeah, her. I'm, I'm going to reach out to her. She's a friend of this show, too. I love I love those girls. Yeah, they're so dope. I'm, I'm going to call her out this. Tabitha, we know you, we love you here. And you know, our thoughts goes out to you. Thank you for sharing. But you know, we, we love those girls here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna play a game with y'all because on this show is good. After um, my panel asked their questions, that's the bear with, with the hat to the back. The only guy <laughs> yeah, on What up, bro? He ain't What's that doing? young, young, young. He knows who intro is. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Um, my question really was about um, after the second album, like after Atlantic, I wanted to ask what was the most difficult time, like the di most difficult way to transition after that second album? Um, transition from, or after the second album to just like, just chilling? Yeah, like how did it feel like, did it feel like it was over? Did it feel like, oh no, we got the third, the trifecta has to be completed. You know, after like one, two, and it was just like, the ascension was crazy. I mean, the impact was crazy. I just wanted to know, mm -hmm. like, how did it, you know, what did it feel like just to? Well, we had, we had a lot of support from people. Uh, we, we fell back from from the stage where we continued touring. I you know we ended up doing John Legend's Mother's Gospel album. Mm -hmm. uh, we was working with different artists, doing demos and stuff like Terrell Hicks, um, Redbone Black, there's some, some other groups. My dudes had us up in the studio with NSYNC at times. And um, mm. so, you know, once Kenny passed, I felt like, in my heart, I felt like it was the end of the intro. But in my mind, I knew that there had to be a plan to present to our listeners where Kenny passed away, but that can't be the ending story. It's like, I didn't want the story, well, we didn't want the story to be, mm -hmm. intro is over because Kenny died. So thus, let's let's go ahead and drop a single. Let's do something else to keep the narrative past that. And maybe I have to put the period on back there, but. They froze up or is it me? Okay, okay. okay. You know, fast forward to 2001, we got a documentary coming out now. Mm -hmm. Okay, we there. Okay, yeah. So the, the documentary drops mm. Thanksgiving, and a lot of the, a lot of the like I I hear your question, but it's so deep and there's so many answers to it that you know we we could sit here and talk about it an hour because there was a time when I, I ended up driving David Letterman for like four years after after I got out the um after the group because I knew I still had to work, but I didn't want to go out and work like in the main set you know and yo what's up buddy how you doing let me get a <laughs> you know none of that stuff so and um yeah but how, well, how do you feel like the, the transition was like i took it as um a reset uh, a break okay. and as far as money yeah i was i was getting paper man i wasn't letting that stop me so um <laughs> yeah other than that man it's like you know what if it was for family close friends Mm -hmm. You probably would feel the impact more, but honestly, I didn't feel, I didn't feel the whole "woe is me" thing. I didn't feel sure. that, you know. 
Appreciate that. Nice. Lavelle got some really good questions there. Before Charlene um, asks her question, y'all need to flex real quick because you know I'm, I'm all in the background. What plaques do I see in the background? What do I see back there? Um, you got the intro album. The first one is the intro album. album. And then the second one is uh, Jason Lyric. Uh, what do you call it's, it? It's awards all over the place, though. It's, yeah, we got toys in here. We got ASCAP, Songwriters of the Year. We got um amongst the songs which you see top 10 and RB music joints. Never say blast plaques still over there. But uh damn for peace joints. Just stuff that just end up it's like collectibles. Yeah, just collectibles. You guys are doing just fine then. Yeah. Yeah, we cool. We, we cool. We'll see you next week. And um I guarantee you come out to North Carolina when we hit the stage, what you gonna get? That night you're not gonna get no place else. Well, That's tell right. your people in advance when they hit hit you up. I, I can't remember who hit my people's up. Tell mm -hmm. them we on. I, I'm coming here on. Y'all can talk to me on camera. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the documentary then. Awesome. So tell your people in advance that I'm coming. So tell them don't get don't get Hollywood on me because I will replay this clip and tag y'all on Instagram. And I have a nice so I have you, a nice following. So Lavelle, you, is my viewership good tonight, show? Because I know you be, you're watching. It's my healthy. Good, Lavelle? You healthy. Okay. <laughs> so your friends will give you our phone numbers. That way when you touch down, you can hit us up. We're gonna okay. be in Carolina and also later on that night we're gonna be in Rocky Mount. We're just Perfect. gonna do our own little um after party. I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna get that. And then we'll follow you. My camera crew will follow y'all and um I'll give y'all a nice little BTS for the whole little thing. Appreciate it. Don't worry, it. I'm gonna get y'all into 2022 with your peoples and my peoples. <laughs> <laughs> um hi Charlene, what you gonna ask intro? How are you guys? Good, how you doing, Charlene? I'm fine. Um, my favorite song off your first album was Come Inside. Um, right. What were some of your favorite songs off the first album? Mm, nice. Come Inside. <laughs> Don't Leave Me. Okay. Come Inside. My two favorites are Come Inside and Let Me Be the One. Okay. I like that one too. Off of that album. Come Inside is, was the most um, uh, <laughs> recording it was <laughs> The craziest song on the album. We was we just went straight up rock stars on that joint. Jeff had the girl in the in the um vocal booth, butt naked, and they in there getting Good it time. on. And they got the mic in the middle of them, and the engineers recording everything that they're doing, and he ends up putting it on a song. I was like, you know, I'm like, telling you, I was a senior in high school, had your posters all over my my room. So to me, it's amazing that I'm even sitting here talking to you today. But great job on that album, you guys. Thank I really you for the love it. appreciate you. Yes. John, this this is your era all day, huh? It's all day. Yes. Look, I'm gonna play a game with y'all before I let before I tell y'all good night. Then I'm asking the real question and I see y'all next week. It's a game called Either Or. It's really easy. Basically, I'm I'm gonna make it R and B style to make it make it fun for y'all. Like Charlene, if I say peanut butter and jelly or tuna fish, you'll say what? Which one? Butter and jelly. Lavelle, if I say um Popeyes or Church's Chicken? Which who are you rocking with? Churches. That's the game. You got it. Got, got it. it. <laughs> Perfect. And sync and everything. I'm gonna start off with um Jeff, cause buddy buddy can talk, and I like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeff, you ready? Let's go. I'll be yapping. No, the '90s is a is a real is the real golden era, definitely for me. Um. If um, y'all had to go do a tour right now, are you going to rock with the girls from SWV or are you going to rock with In Vogue? Ooh, 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 ooh. SWV. Ooh, oh, the New York connection. No, it's not even just that. Um, I, we know them. Okay. We, you know, we personally have relationships with them. So no, you know. one of y'all used to date Coco. You know, I really know the deal. <laughs> y'all used to date one of the members. This is Marty A. Johnson show. See, you set yourself up for that. <laughs> I ain't gonna say which one, but y'all know it's true. First off, I don't wanna know which one. I ain't gonna pull your cards out. Don't make me seem like a liar. Is that true or not? It's in the documentary. Okay, <laughs> basically it's true. It's my <laughs> job <to> show. <laughs> all, all right, buddy. Mm -hmm. Buddy, um, yeah. right now, like I said, um, the 90s was a lot of, a lot of ladies. It's all about the ladies and all that. Um, both of these queens are from New York. If they're gonna do a versus right now, who do you think will win out of Foxy or Kim? 
Uh, good question. But I think I'll go with Little Kim. Yeah, I, th I think I would go with Little Kim because as soon as she put on that funny how time flies with intro remix mm -hmm. that Clark Kent did, it, it just shut down everything. And I'm a big Foxy Brown fan. But um, yeah, this record that we did with Little Kim is just straight fire. I remember Biggie came up to me and was like, yo, man, I heard that record, blah, blah, blah. And for him to say it, you know, and it just gives a blessing. So but yeah, shout out to Little Kim. I think she would um, come off and she'd bring the locks on with her. She'd have Diddy come out, probably, you know, she'd bring the whole circus. So definitely. When Kim, we see Kim, Kim is a whole different energy. Like, like you anticipating what she's going to do. Mm -hmm. I think that's not happen. You just call something up. If Swiss hears you, or Timbo, he's, they're going to make that happen. Well, you're going to give me my commission check first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jeff. Yep. Bell Bid DeVoe, Poison. You're going to go to Bell Bid DeVoe, Poison, or you're going to take um the lady out to go see um Jodeci. Jodeci. That was, that, was, that, that was an easy one. Easy. Well then. All right. So you guys from from the era of um of groups and all that. Another question: Do y'all split the money e evenly? It's just two of y'all in the group. Absolutely, down to the penny. Perfect. Some groups don't do that. Really? Um, Silk could be here on Tuesday, and um, uh, I'm sorry, High Five would be here on Sunday. Well, <laughs> Christian and them, High Five would be here on Tuesday. They don't split the money evenly. Silk don't split the money evenly. Oh. Um, Charlene Lavelle, is that true? Didn't um, John John say that? John, the care John that. John said it all uh, depends on what. But anyhow, <laughs> that's it. Right, that's it. Any, anyhow, um, next month, next month we're still doing our tribute to the '90s. Um, Sis finally is going to do the show. Spinderella is coming on the show. Shout out to Spinderella. Definitely, I I love Spin. When she was with Salt and Pepper. She got mad because she felt like the money should have got split three ways, even though she wasn't with them from the beginning, like Jam Master J, God bless his soul, but run, you know, run DMC. Yeah. They split the money evenly at the time, but, but Salt and Pepper did not. So my either or for you is, are you team Salt and Pepper like, no girl, you only came at the, during the first, after the first album, you're going to get what we give you, or you think after 30 years, she should get a third of the pie? Are you team Salt and Pepper or are you team Spinderella? Let me answer. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm team Salt and Pepper, but I think it could have been more like a 40-40-20 um, split. Yeah. She thought, so I know, you know the movie they did last year? The Salt and Pepper movie? Mm -hmm. Um, I think they got, it was $5 million all together. $5 million. Mm -hmm. They got, Salt and Pepper got, you know, two. Two, and then all the handlers got their money. They gave her five hundred thousand. Sis said that wasn't enough money. Wow. Yeah. Wow. They, they said it wasn't enough. So she's I thought smart, she's a good business person. She actually um owned a hair salon not too far from my house. Yeah. yeah. But don't worry, Spin. I'm gonna I'm gonna grill you. Let me get back to um intro. I'll see you next month. <laughs> um, I got, I got two 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 more for y'all. Lauren Hill, musical genius. We love Lauryn Hill with that one classic album. We love, we do. Yeah. Would you go see Lauryn Hill or would you go see D'Angelo? Who's that for? Me and Buddy. That's you. I'm going to say D'Angelo because we're going to wait like three, four hours before Lauryn Hill come out. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's come out, it's time for the lights to go on. Like, okay. I'm D'Angelo. Lauren, I love you, but I know, yeah, D'Angelo. Okay. Back to the 90s. Um, wow. This girl was so overrated. And girl, you know my team been talking to you for a long time. I'll do it at midnight if I have to get you on. You want to do it. Jody Watley. We love Jody Watley. I love her too. See, um, we do. We love Jody Watley here. Would you, um, Jody Watley, or would you go see Angie Stone? Ooh. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go see Jody Watley because I've seen Angie perform live. I've just never seen Jody Watley perform live. So I would. I would like to go see Jody Watley. I love some yeah. Jody. Yeah. Yeah. If Intro get a tour right now, um, Jeff, get a call right now and say, "Look, um, Lavelle's cousin, Lavelle's twin brother, want to come in the group. Would you? And they want to offer you." Um, a million dollars. 
for for another album because they they did this to um, H Town. Shout out to H Town. Um, they offered H Town a million dollars to bring in a third member. And um, what, what would your vote be? Bring a third member in or bring a third member out? No, I'm gonna tell you why. Please that million dollars. That million dollars after taxes, after we split it, and then that person doesn't really add to the group anyway. It's a loss anyway. It's like we're jeopardizing our brand, you know, for for a million bucks. It's not worth it. Okay. I, absolutely not. It's not worth it. Are you sure you're just saying this because we're on the air live? No, no. <laughs> so so let's let's keep this real gully real Please. quick. We're so, friends of the show now. So right. so so you know we're, we're a different group now. Me and Buddy are in a situation where we're we're actually set for our retirements and all of that. So Perfect. we don't feel like we're struggling. Thank God. So money is never the, the go-to. I'll tell you why, because money can destroy everything. It can, it, it can, it can, it can make you happy, but it can also take away happiness. Yeah. Because people fight for the money, they, they fall in love for the money. Mm -hmm. You can't go that route. So it gotta make sense. Okay. So basically, sorry, Lavelle, you're like I keep on saying in the mirror. Sorry. <laughs> Hell no. Let's get up some tracks. <laughs> We're singing some tracks, Lavelle. <laughs> okay. Here's my last one. Then I'm um get a couple more questions. Probably tell y'all good night. Um, my last one. Oof. Oh, this is off the top of your head. Yeah. Wow. All right, you got it. I'm good at this. I see. You. I see. You. All right. I'm good at this. Shout out to my my um, alma mater, Shore University. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my last one from you. Since we're back, um, Biggie, Ready to Die album, Ooh. classic, classic, or Nas Illmatic. Ooh. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, think, think before you answer. Think. You better think. I'm going to tell you tonight. I, I, I couldn't get into Illmatic because I think so Illmatic I, was out when we was working. We was working really hard. I was listening to Illmatic, Illmatic every day, bro. Yeah, see, so Jeff is he's, oh, he's a Queens God. guy. Jeff is from Queens. I'm from Brooklyn. So that's why I would go with Biggie and Jeff would go with with um Nas because because the Queens. Okay. Yeah, so. I have a question to ask both of y'all. Y'all give me two different answers because if y'all share with me, I'll share with y'all. On this show, I like to get to the nitty gritty. I don't know. Hold on. Did y'all do y'all research on my little platform before y'all came on? I went to your platform and checked you out. You interviewed some pretty interesting people. And um, that, that's kind of dope. That's kind of dope. So I, I was I'm like this. I'll tell you this. Wayne been on this show. Hell, Lisa Lisa been on this show. I, I saw a Laura been on this show. Well, I'll just say this season. Help me out, panel. Karen White, Coolio, Julio, Anthony Hamilton, Donna Robinson, One Twelve, Troy it's Oliver. Wrong. Right now, it's about y'all. So, <laughs> since we're sharing, um, y'all seen a lot of people. I need a name. Um, tell me some uh, artists that we all know. If you say it hasn't happened, you're lying. Give me an artist that we all know that was real difficult. That wasn't asked. That they wasn't who they um supposed to be. You know, some people like to be some artists. Extra, Some artists think you know that good Hollywood talk on camera, then behind the scenes they're an asshole. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> you want us to give you names? This is Marty and Johnson show. We're friends now. If you <laughs> give me one, I'll give you one. If y'all both give me one, I'll give you two. I never told I'm you before. Think. I'm trying to think because there's there are um mm, okay now we're friends now because I'm gonna share two now. Throw somebody under both y'all give me one, I'll give you both two different ones. Do they have to be a singer? Huh? It gotta be someone that we know. Yeah, somebody that we know. Somebody that we know. I yeah, will. We all know the panel knows. The yeah, same yeah, name. Oh, I'm so you be an actor? Nah. Yes. So yes. I want a name. I want a name. That I'm gonna spit my water out. I got one. So it was the pre-American Music Awards party. We Tell was it. backstage and they were serving food, and I saw one of my favorite actors sitting at the table. He's eating some fish. I was like, Oh my God, yo, Mr. Fishburn, I love your work. You know what he said to me? Just see I'm fucking eating. He's mean as hell, yo. Damn. So Lawrence Fishburne that night was so mean to me, bro. I hate him after that. Wow. He's one of my favorite actors ever. Yeah. Yeah, there was a DJ. Damn, I don't want to say his name because I'm running. Okay, we're friends now. Okay, okay. So I'm let I'm let that marinate because since I'm Jeff shared, I'm a share one. If yeah. you see a share one, I'll share another one. I'm a see, I give names in this show. This show, I say this 
this is a top tier platform. People love to come on this show because, as you can tell, we ask real questions. Oh, Lord. This is real conversation. Too bad. This type of show, this ain't 1991 no more. This is the new wave. If they can't get with it, stay ass at home. <laughs> Don't hit that stage. I'm letting, while Buddy's marinating, he's scared to say a name. First, Jeff, thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. Um, Tristan, high five. You're coming on here on Sunday. You know what I told you last time you was here. I told you to pep it up. Tristan from High Five came on by himself. Mm -hmm. um, two, last season, he, this is right at the pandemic, right in the beginning of pandemic. Um, high Five people reached out to me. They was mad because my castmates did it. My co-hosts did it. They wanted me to do it. He's uh, part of my brand. So I told my co-host, shout out to Fisher Volley Boy, my co-host, he did, he did the IG live and Tristan was trying to get all, you know, you know Tristan, you know this happened. Cause oh, wow. then um, I was, I was there. Basically my co-host was, <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time. And then I want my co-host to get his feet wet. Basically. I told my co-host to do it. And Tristan was getting all mad, trying to get all stuffy. And I came on, I'm like, look, we ain't, I was like, look now, this, this ain't, this ain't what it is, buddy. And then when he got called out, he tried to fake it up and say, oh, bro, it ain't like that. Well, Tristan, you know that's what's said live. Oh, wow. But um, thank you, for, Jeff, thank you for sharing. And high five will be here on Sunday. All right. <laughs> Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> so, yeah, I was on um, backstage, Connecticut, and um, I, saw, I was Where with, at? I was with a female friend. I was with, uh, I was actually with Mr. Cheeks at a show up in Connecticut. Perfect. And uh, one of my friends. Connecticut. Yeah, and she's like, um, hey, do you know Kid Capri? I was like, yeah, he's cool. He's mad cool. She said, I want to take a picture with him. So I was like, all right, come on, let's go and take a picture. So um, he was standing there talking to another DJ. And um, I was like, okay, just wait for them to finish talking. And then, you know, I asked him to take a picture, which was not going to be no problem. So I waited for the break. And as soon as they stopped talking, I was like, yo, excuse me, can you take a picture with her? He's like, yo, don't you fucking see me talking, man? You, don't, you can't see me in the conversation? And then the dude that I was talking to him, he's like, yo, that's Buddy from Intro. So then he went back into the person for tea. He's like, oh, yo, what's up, what's up? And wow. I said to her, I was like, fuck him, let's go. I ain't taking no picture with him. Right. I just left it like that. So, yeah, I had to pick one. You had to go under the bus. <laughs> Shout out to DJ King for you. Mm. Well, thank, thank you for sharing. I definitely appreciate don't you. That. See me on, don't you see me talking? And I, I'm, with a, I'm with a girl. Why you gonna blow me up like right. that? Don't you see me talking? Yeah, how about you never gonna talk again? <laughs> no, I was just <laughs> I would look. I would have you do a job for the show, but that's when I see you y'all next week, next Saturday. All right. But um, but right now, um, tell so the show you got a show next week. First off, before I get to the show, um, y'all producing all that stuff. Is intros looking to produce some of the new wave artists? And who do y'all listen to right now? Let me know. Um, we got some dope young cats that's coming up underneath us. We got this chick named Madam Ray. Her, her little brother plays for the Los Angeles Kings hockey team. Um, we're working with some of Jeff, your nephew, right? Yeah, I got two nephews that's kind of dope, yeah. They kind of dope. My nephew, Markel Gray, um, as far as outside artists, um, more of the younger producers than the actual artists because the, their style of music, they they like the 90s music, but they don't want to create it. You know what I mean? They want to go and go more into like some of the new stuff. And if you hear some of the new stuff that we're doing, that you'll never see us probably perform on stage unless lightning strikes or something like that. But we do have like some of that um, like new school flavor. But you can't give me um 45 seconds of it. I can give you 45 seconds of it, bro. Please, this is Marty A. Johnson show. Yeah. All right, Marty A. Johnson, I'm gonna play what we just did. They're not even finished. I know, but it's just... okay. And, and panel, if you're not feeling it, you get them the cut. I don't care if they've sold a million records. <laughs> <laughs> And, and Jeff is pissed. <laughs> thank, buddy. Thank you for sharing. So, no, no, no. 
And that's 45 seconds. Well, that, that's, that's, that, that's enough. Um, He's working on so the look, team. I give you my direct number. You give me yours. I'm, I'm for real. I would definitely come out and um, I'll give you all some nice BTS and all that stuff. Cause I know I'm going, I know I'm going to see Tappan and all of them. So you're on my radar too. Cause like I said, um, I got, I, cause everyone on their agenda, I'm sorry, everyone on the um bill that you're going to, yep. every single one of them been on this platform. Every single no. one of them. From right. next, what up, what up next? Next been here. Um, mm -hmm. Hold on. Change the faces did here, been here. Shy has been here. Change the faces has been here. And intro. That's all this season. So, so look. Um, so I like that lineup too. For sure. I like I that lineup for sure. I'm, I'm glad to see y'all on the road too. I'm I'm so glad. Thank you. Because um Saturday um, I be I say that. Where's the groups at? That we all them. I ain't gonna say diamond and rub. One with them classic records because it's always shy. It's always um Drew Hill and yeah. Silk. As far as group wise. Not too far from you. This Saturday we're gonna be in Skippers, Virginia. That's Where's me? Near, near Emporia, Virginia. It's a town called Skippers. It looks oh, like. I thought they were gonna be in North Carolina. That's next weekend, like tomorrow night. We, to, well, Saturday, this Saturday coming up, we're gonna go down to the Skippers. Oh. Then the next weekend, we're gonna be in North Carolina. Oh, yes. We're coming to one, not this Saturday. We're going to one Saturday. Saturday. This is something else. Like we'll figure it out when we get there. But it looks like it's gonna be something fun. It's an outdoor show. Which one? Um, this one that we do. Well, they both outdoor shows. We'll put. Put Marty A. Johnson on the house. list. Don't get funny with me now. <laughs> no, we all good. It's all good. Yeah. Okay. But look, can Terry win your social media and all that. So I'm going to tag this up and all that. And I'm going to post the flyers and all that. So they can come see intro. So they can hear um, Ribbon in the Sky and all the good stuff. So. Yeah. Terry win your social media, please. And make sure and neither one of you boys follow me. Yeah, you do. We follow each other. Oh, Jeff, you follow me? Yeah, yeah. Sure, I've been so busy for the last two weeks since I got the invitation. But okay. soon as we get off, I swear, as soon as we get off of this right here, I'm going to to um to take care of all of that stuff. And I'll DM you and Jeff will send you our phone numbers. Perfect. And, uh, DM me that and uh to me. look, you can talk to me directly. You don't need to talk to my team. You're gonna get you're gonna get the come from the horse's mouth. So if I say I'm coming, I'm coming. Yeah. That's what's so, up. So, so we got access to the red phone. The real red phone. I got <laughs> Nadell, tell them I have multiple phones. You got <laughs> ten phones. Damn. They all work. No. <laughs> so you guys, North Carolina intro is gonna be here next weekend in North Carolina. And Marty A. Johnson show is gonna be there. I know Charlene's coming. You know it. Hey. <laughs> <All right. laughs> okay. So look, follow intro, Terry on your social media individually and group wise, please. Um Buddy White Music, Buddy W I K E music. Um, Buddy White on Facebook, um, BuddyWhite.com, <laughs> intro. We have so many intro uh, Instagram pages. It's, it's hard to follow. We're trying to centralize that right now. And I think you already followed um, the intro page that I'm on. Um, that's, um, what is it? Uh, official underscore R&B um, underscore group See? underscore intro. That's too, more, that's too long. The uh, real intro. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, that's, what that's, that's, that's what it is. Shout oh, out to the group intro. Y'all did. I know. I'm gonna tell you why. I had a stalker. A oh. main stalker. Like it was pro. It was a problem. So I was trying to hide. Happy birthday to Jason Evans. Jason's oh, yes. birthday. Oh, what? Yeah, the um director for the documentary. Happy birthday, birthday. Jason. To Jason. Hey. So you had a stalker. So you changed it up. Yeah, I tried to switch it up so that stalker couldn't follow me, man. It was crazy, yo. Seriously. Wow. So the police. Told Devin, look, in the meantime, don't don't stalk your asses at this show next week because why I'm gonna have my burner with me. <laughs> I got that. <them. laughs> I'm, I'm playing. I'm playing. So look, intro's coming next week. Fellas, uh make I appreciate y'all. I'm gonna see y'all next week. I'm gonna talk more about the documentary and y'all better have some exclusive music for me because the one I'm doing next week is gonna be for the new season. Cause um I'm wrapping up this season, but this is all this one here is live. So shout out to everyone here. Y'all welcome, ladies. And um, yes, fellas, you. make sure y'all follow me. First off, how was this platform? And how was this with, with us? It's kind of dope, awesome. man. You awesome. kind of like, you you, yeah. you be, number one, you did your research. Number two, you tell it like it is. And number three, you, if I could tell, you will come at a person if you need to. It's entertaining. <laughs> Definitely. Entertaining. 
I would call you like a reality a reality TV on social media. Without without the internet, without computers, I can see it's this on dope. television. Yeah, it's kind of dope. Yeah. And I can see a lot of people watching it. And Okay. I, I, think, I think I'm doing just fine. I think I'm doing okay. Uh, you doing good. If not, them two right there will tell me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Look, I can talk to y'all all day, but I need to reserve myself for next week. Come and see y'all next Saturday in Norlola in North Carolina. I'll see them on the 25th. Charlene Lavelle, it's nice yeah. to meet you. Yes, sir. Nice meeting you. Look forward to seeing you guys next week. Pleasure. I just followed you, uh, just followed you too, uh, buddy. Right. Buddy White music. Yep. All right. Y'all DM me ASAP and um yes. I'm a DM and I'll see y'all next week. All right, bro man. <laughs> Appreciate y'all. All right, same here. Good Peace. night. Good night. Intro was good. I like the intro. Yes. It was all right. Yeah, I love yeah, it. Dope. Intro was good. Yes. Oh, guess what? Good. Darlene, where are you going next weekend? <laughs> Um, to see intro and all the other people on the bill and um, our girl, Boss Lady. Boss Lady. Good. Lavelle, I told you, people people rock for this little yeah. platform, don't they? <laughs> we're going to revisit this um, next weekend. Yeah, that's <laughs> Look, yeah. Next weekend is going to be something else. Mm. Lavelle, what do you think about intro? Why get the, um, cause we're going to tap in, y'all. Send me some music. That was, yeah. that was great. This like that was yeah. exactly what I thought it would be. I mean, they're they're cool. They embraced the platform, the questions. Yeah. Didn't they didn't really deter from too much either. Like they didn't really oppose to anything. They were like they were with it. Yeah, I like. And that. They, and you hear them say like I could see people watching this like outside of the virtual like format. I could literally see. Okay. So. so um, appreciate it. Man. You know, I did my research. You didn't know he was dating Coco. Yes, I, I, did. Did. I did my research too. I did. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. yep. But look, you know I say a lie. You know I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> did y'all did y'all know he was a cop? Mm -hmm. Yep. He was like, "What? You trying to tell all my business?" <laughs> <laughs> that's how we do. But yeah, he retired in September. I had, to, I had to read you my question because that's what I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask that. <laughs> Are y'all ready to tap in? Let's get it. Yes, let's get it. Um, LaBelle, tell these people what they need to um do, please. Yo, send your track to Marty A. Johnson 4 at gmail.com. You know, make sure that it's your absolute best work. If you're not going to send it to Sean Garrett or somebody like that, then don't send it to Marty. If it ain't your best, keep it. That this part. is the top. I say this every week. We talk and if you that. Don't do that. Look. I don't care if Lavelle's not here, Charlene's not here. Seems like <laughs> they ain't missing a beat. But um, Charlene, but we ain't feeling what happens. We're gonna cut you, boo. We're gonna we cut. You. But oh, you can also go ahead. I'm um, call in at one eight seven seven Marty ninety. I'm sorry, I didn't put on my thing. Your problem. record. If we uh, don't, we cut it and we don't like it. Call in and defend yourself. Okay. Please. Oh, this is a really nice one. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Again, I do not hear these records turn out. I really don't. Ooh, let me get it together. Now we get her on this show. I and Lavelle, you know who she is when I say her name, but Lavelle, Charlene, mm. um, I think we're gonna tell our ages now for real, even though you're older than me. <laughs> I think we're about to tell our age for real. You ready? What? Like do like, when you find out who it is. Hmm. We love okay. Who is it, Marty? Who is it? We get her on the show. Y'all would be lovely. Watch Charlene's li eyes light up in the bell. Hi, Tracy Spencer. It's the Marty Day Johnson show. Yes. We miss you so much. Come on on the show. We would love to have you right here for the Tribute to the 90s with LaBelle and Charlene. We got our tap in edition with Artists and Mythic Material. We have a young lady named Emily W. She is doing her rendition of Tender Kisses. Ooh. LaBelle, we don't like it, what happens? Cut her. We love tender kisses. Come on, girl. I'm so confused, and I think I'm going to cry tonight. What am I 
Take your time, girl. Wait, wait. wait. No, we're trying. I want you to love me. Oh, I am. Come on. What happened to the dreams we used to share? Why did I love them? Why don't you even care? Shelly, is he gonna kiss from you? No. No. <laughs> no. no. We love Tracy Spencer. Did Emily W hit the mark? Oh man. It's that was that just sounded like it was a struggle. Yes, her notes were all over the place. We need Tracy Spencer to come on back out. Come on, Tracy Spencer. We want you here at the Marty A. Johnson show. We'll see you soon. I love Tracy Spencer. I grew up on her. <laughs> And I know she's still gorgeous. <laughs> I know she is. Okay. okay. No I really okay. I, I feel I'm feeling the '90s vibe right now. So I'm gonna play something else from the '90s. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Not yet. Not yet. Let me, let me play a guy. Let me not discriminate. You know, I don't want to play it. Um. PGF Shaw. PGF Shaw. You have a joint called Pool Party. So we never hear this record till now. Let's see what you got here. Lavelle, this your people's? Tap in. Avail, he froze. No, I'm, I'm I, I pause. I'm, I'm, I'm not. He froze. Yeah, Marty froze. But I'm saying what I've heard so far is horrible. I, I don't like that at all. Did you like that? I was getting into it a little bit. I probably, I don't know how long that would have lasted, but. <laughs> okay, I don't know what he got going on. <laughs> what the hell? We didn't like that. We don't hear this record till now. Um, Charlene, what do you think of that? It was trash. I didn't like that. I can't tell because you and the bell let it rock for 90 seconds. No, we didn't. You froze up on us. Oh, my bad. <laughs> well, we live, anything can happen. But yeah. um we found that out tonight, didn't we? Lavelle. Yeah, that I was confused. When you came back, it was like a bunch of kids playing. Yeah. <laughs> but I was here. But um, I was trying to get into it. I mean, it had like this little southern bounce, and then you froze. I don't know how long I would have actually enjoyed it though. Okay, y'all ready? What you got? Ooh. Hey. It's a group. Okay. And they're doing a rendition of another group. I'm assuming, I'm assuming this is a group. Lavelle, I'm trying to do a promo. I'm about to put you in a promo. I don't know that. Um, it better be good too. <laughs> Jagged Edge, what up? Marty A. Johnson here. Look, this is our tapping edition. You guys need to come out to this show. Right now, we have some artists doing every edition of your classic, Walked Out of Heaven. Charlene, I know you know all the words to this. Oh my gosh, I'm ready to hear this. Please give them justice. And the Please. artist's name is um Cato the Artist. If we ain't feeling this, what happens? Cut. Cause we don't hear this till now. I'm rolling down a lonely highway, asking God to please forgive me for messing up the blessing He gave to me. I see 
Everything clear and now The night is black as black as it's ever been Without my girl, I'm losing Asking God to shed his grace on me I need It feels like I just won't let out of it ever It feels like I got an it on my life away hey, I'm scared just like the time has lost its ever and I don't know what to do. Gonna get back right with you. Well, he cut it off for me. What do you think? Um, are y'all okay? We're fine. We're fine. Y'all taking too long. <laughs> cut that quick. All right, all right. He, okay. Now, you know, it. when this, when Jagged Edge drops, their music, we know it's gonna be a hit. Yes, but this right here, um, it was. I don't know what it was. It was next. Yeah. <laughs> nothing to say, say, nothing at all. Do you want to hear an, um, another throwback, or you want to hear um, a female rapper? Let's 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 do, yeah. let's do a rapper. Yes. Yeah, okay. okay. It's a female, I'm assuming, it's a, yeah, it's a female rapper. Um, why do you go love putting Queen in for her name? Okay, I'm gonna call you Queen, put some respect on it. Her name is um Queen Key, K-E-Y. It's called My Way. It's gonna be my way too if I don't like it with a cut. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Let's see what she's talking about. Come on, Queen, Queen Key, what up? Queen she bitch. These hoes don't know what life about. If money talk, then when the bitch converse, she type it out. That nigga can't get no cash, she just swipe it out. My generation going down here, it's wiping out. Meanwhile, I'm turned as fuck. I left my pizza in the oven, that bitch turned as fuck. A lot of cheese to go around. Mm -mm. Lavelle, just boom sound here? No. <laughs> you said that quick. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't know who this is, but, you know, I, I was at this event last night mm -hmm. um, at the seven bar or whatever, and it was a lot of females in there doing like their rap shit. And I, ah, Lord, it made me so like, I was just like, wow. Like they still doing the Nikki, they still doing the- No originality. No. It's crazy, yo. It's like, there's one chick with a fake ass on top of a pool table. Like everybody's just looking at her. Like she's just rapping to the, it's like, it's crazy. But anyway, this right here, um, I didn't get a girl next door vibe. I didn't get nothing special. It just sounded like, you know, ratchet rap. Okay, she's getting too much air time. I'm gonna let Sean talk for the next one. Um, let's go with another female. Her name is, uh, oh, the ladies look, finally ladies in it in. Her name is uh, Anne Marie, it's called Handle It. Charlene, how are you gonna handle it if you ain't feeling it? Okay, I'm gonna cut it. Let's Come see. On, handle it. And she, she got in parentheses, an exclusive. Okay. You, she only an exclusive from us too, if we don't like it. Casey Jones, thank you for seeing your stuff in. <laughs> She's singing? I was rapping. Oh. I like her. What if I was a creep? Is it for a weekend? Don't let you know when I'm leaving. I love her. I was disloyal. Put up the niggas before you. But I still credit on for you. Don't say I'm savvy, just for you. So what if I gave you a pussy away? Let another nigga see how it tastes. Can you imagine it all on his face? Go through my text and he called me baby. Yeah. Right if I'm choosing. Catch you out here looking stupid. The bell, you rocking like Charlene. 
hell. That is my shit right there. You heard me? Yes, I love Anne Marie. Come on the show, girl. Hit us up. Come on the show. Is Anne Marie Anne Marie? Yes, yes. Damn. like Charlene. <laughs> that's because I love her. Something for the ladies, that's why. Yeah, she's an amazing artist. I like her. This is A. Marie, A. Marie? Yes, I just yes, no, 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 yes, no, 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 no. Yes. You said no? Okay, no? Okay. Not, not, when, oh, that'd be nice to get her. It is girl. the A. Marie, that's her. Not, <laughs> not, not the A. Marie that we really know. Yes. Not, it's not. It, that's her, I'm trying, okay. I'm watching the video. Okay, so it's not one thing, A. Marie. Okay. No, Charlene, I'm watching the video, Charlene. This is still very strong. Like, it's this nice, is, though. Like, it's strong. Like, yeah. if it was a re record, I would be like, what the hell? Like, her voice kind of, you know, modified, but it's still strong. So, I would say, like, even if, even though it's not like A Marie's song, it's still strong as an A Marie record if she was to come back. Like, this is dope. It was nice, though. Thank you, girl, for sending it in. We ain't gonna be here all night. Thank you. Look, I got some bad news, people. What? Um, October, I'm only going back to Tuesday nights because. I didn't get ready for the new season. I'm sorry. I got to get ready for this. Look, I'm going to be like Lavelle. First off, I appreciate the energy. I do. I do. But look, I'll do it more than one night a week. But like when we have a celebrity on, because we don't really have time to tap in. Does that sound fair? Because I got to get ready for this new season. I'm talking about this new season. <laughs> for real. This <laughs> season is lit here. I'm, yeah. look, everyone loves new stuff now. Yeah, the this right here season was great. It's been great. Well, so the season's not over yet, but I, this October, I got to go back to Tuesday nights because I'm trying to get ready for the, get ready the new shit ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but anyhow, um, good job, girl. Um, Casey Jones, I'll play you next. Um, ooh. I'm going to do the initials. Lavelle talked to me. Charlie talked about Lavelle, these are two remakes. Uh, I'm gonna let you pick the initial. One initial is MJ, and the, and the other one is MA. Which one you want to do? I I'm, I'm gonna go with MJ just for just for you know. Okay. Familiarity there. Okay, it's because someone's doing a remake of Michael Jackson. Oh. Pyt. Oh, Pyt. Bring it, or you're gonna get cut. The artist name. Well, it's a group called um, Best Night Ever, the band. Okay. PYT. PYT, doing a cover. Let's see. Come on. It's called Best Night Ever, is the name of the band. Marty A. Johnson Show, tap all the way in. Let's go. Where did you come from, Give me a chance. I need you so go fly with me. Don't you know now is a perfect time. We can make, make it home. Hit the city lights in the night. Is a love and pain. Ooh, let me take you to the max. I want to love you. For your face. You need some love and the love and care. And I. Do you like with this? 
Can we like Michael? It's a white boy. Got me, white boy. Yeah. I'm gonna get bored quick. Enjoyed it. I did, especially okay. the instrumental part. I I love that part. We got to the, the good talk part. It was too long, Lavelle. You agree? Um, yeah, some in, in a way, but it was no slacking at all on that solo. It was it was no. a match. So I mean, it was focus more on the singer. I I could I could um tolerate him. He skipped the part of the bridge too. You notice that? Yeah. And, 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 I was gonna put that. <laughs> <laughs> That's in that. Thank I was going for that part. That's where you take it home at. He but, cheated um, his way out of that. But it was nice, though. Thank you for sending it in. Um, Casey Jones, I'm going to get to you in a minute. Um, Because um, these girls hit me up from Texas. A, um, A. Isaac Sisters, Marty A. Johnson Show. New girls are from Texas. Shout out to Texas. Yes. Um, These um, sisters here got something called Texas Girls. Um. Let's see. Lavelle, if we don't like these girls, what's going to happen? Cut. Let's call them Texas girls. Let me talk over and give them some justice. I know you like it. Oh, they get excited. They're so excited. Oh, when they see the addicts, they see the addicts. Oh, I'm not getting excited. I'm the finest. Really want to give me diamonds. Oh, but I don't care about my I got I don't want I don't want you Texas girl bye <laughs> okay next Lavelle, tell me real quick if I can go on to the next one because um I ain't like her. 
Yeah. Um, it's it, it was it sounded all right. I just felt like um, too much layering, too much, too much like you know effects going on. I kind of wanted to hear the voice first. Maybe when the hook came, I would have dealt with a little bit of you know mixing magic or whatever. But I just wanted to hear a natural killer voice over that bass line without the extra. <clears throat> it felt a little forced. Floppy. It was sloppy in the beginning. It was sloppy? Yes. I'm playing three more records. I'm telling you I'm good night. Um, Casey Jones, thank you. Casey, Casey Jones, like, um, deep MF is incredible. My stuff, I'm gonna keep on sending it in. It's um 320. Defend oh, your record. Casey Jones, it, seven, Casey seven, Jones you gave me all your commercials and all that. Um okay. Casey Jones, I'm confused. Let me just play the record. If I like it, then I'll I'll, I'll digest. I'll dissect it. Okay. Hey. Big drill, keep a big clip for you, big lips. Her giving big tips, I can make a big hit. Hotter than the bitch, still I'm dripping like piss. And I think I'm the shit, the hottest rapper I did shit. Be the beat, D O A, on my first take call. Lavelle, he must be one of your people because you should have cut that already. I'm sorry. I, it made me slightly delusional. <laughs> okay. No, it's 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 a beyond a cut. That's a that's like guillotine to the max. I don't know. Oh Bro, thank you for sending it in, but no. Bro, if we can come on the show one time, just DM me. I might let you on. Um, I'm doing two more. I'm doing two more promos. In the meantime, follow Lavelle. We're at. Boom Sound underscore Lavelle's the personal Boom Sound Factory. You know, that's the crew, AR team, playlists and radio and all that. Go ahead and follow that Boom Sound Factory all together. Charlene? Charlene F. Pridgen on Facebook and Charlene mm -hmm. underscore Monet on Instagram. All right. Let me give a big shout out to Marsha Ambrosius. Hey girl, I met you in Miami not too long ago on my other show, but now it's all about the Marty A. Johnson show. I would love to have you here on this show. I wanna catch up with you, find out what you've been up to and congratulations on the brand new family and all that. Right now we have a young lady called Miss Joey. She's doing her rendition of Far Away. Oh, okay. If we don't like it, what happens? Cut. And I know Marsha Ambrosius, so um, tap in. Marty A. Johnson show. I'm so sad to see you go so soon. I know that you ain't coming back. In the beginning, everything was Panel, is this too big for her? Yes, wow. we can't hear her. It's over way too big for her. Yes, wow. and we can hear her over the music. The the mix isn't right. Yep, it's a lot. No, of, a lot no of she's not right. She's not, right. music, she's not right. <laughs> nope, she ain't right. Neither is the mix. And the song, like you said, too dynamic. Yeah. Marsha, you know I would love to have you on the Marty Johnson show. So um, my team's gonna reach out to you very soon. I gotta tell y'all a secret now. It's about the season finale, and I'm about to play it. Okay. That one who's coming to the season finale, I'm gonna do it right now. Let's do it. I sure do. <laughs> mm. I don't know how we're Charlene, you might have to come stay my house all weekend because I'm about to tell the business now. Well, come tomorrow? No, next weekend. Oh, come yes, be busy. Okay. Well, once you do the promo, you're going to say, what day you want me at your house? Soon as I, I, I say the name, Lavelle might, Lavelle might be saying, <laughs> Lavelle's going to be in the house on Thursday. A sleeping bag. I have to save this weekend for next weekend. Okay, hold on. You ready? Uh -huh. What's going on? Sorry, Brandy and Ashanti, because this trumps y'all, because they sold more records than y'all put together. 
Mm. This is the season finale. Y'all ready? Yes. I ain't gonna do it. I'm a- no, all right. What's up, TLC? It's the Marty A. Johnson Show. Listen, my team been talking to your team to come on the show. I want to hear about Crazy Sex, Crazy Sexy Cool, the anniversary, y'all going on tour. And I heard y'all want to come on the Marty A. Johnson Show. So let's make it happen, girls. In the meantime, we have a gentleman here doing his rendition of Waterfalls. His name is Charles Jones. Lavelle, we ain't feeling it. What are we going to do to it? Good. Uh- T Boss and Chili, I'm gonna see you soon. But right now it's all about Charles Jones, right here on the Marty A. Johnson show, because I don't hear it till now. A lonely mother gazing out of her window, staring at a son that she just can't touch. If that in the time he's in the jail, she'll be by his side. But he doesn't realize it hurts her so much. Y'all feeling it? But all the praying just ain't helping at all. Cause he can't seem to keep himself out of trouble. So he goes out and he makes his money the best way he knows how. Another body laying cold in the blood. Listen to me. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Listen to the rivers and the lakes that you used to. I know that you're gonna have it your way or nothing at all. But I think you're moving too fast. This is TLC. Listen, Charlene, when you do TLC, you got to bring TLC. Yes. Yes. Um, to me, his verses were okay, but when he went into the chorus, um, I didn't like that. Yep. Bell, did um, Charles Jones lose you? Yeah, by, right around um, near the end of the first verse. I feel like that his creativity to this song is dope. Like he made it his own. And mm-hmm. then, but at the same time, it seemed like it was like a dark cloud coming above him as the song went on. Like he he, he lost grip of the record. And then by the time the hook came, it just washed him away. It started to wash him. Oh. Charles James, sorry, womp womp, you didn't make it. But in the meantime, check out t Boz and Chili, TLC. They're coming to a city near you. And also tap him to the Marty A. Johnson show. Season finale, We're trying to get some girls on here, but uh, stay tuned. All right, bye girls. Ooh, get them on the show. You ain't missing a beat, huh, Charlene? <laughs> miss a beat regardless. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Is that a good season finale versus yeah. Ashanti and Brandy? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Think, I love all of them. So I love them all, but I love to see them girls. We're working on it as we speak, so fingers crossed. I think it's going to happen. But in the meantime, I'm on Marty Johnson on every single thing. Sunday High Five is going to be here. And actually, actually oh, I think intro gave me their number. Yeah. Um, they were excellent. They really were. I really, really enjoyed them tonight. I did. Oof. I guess Charlene wanna to talk to us after um the show. So I'm not I'm gonna log off Facebook. Facebook, I love y'all. Thank y'all for supporting this little old platform. And this mm-hmm. this young black man just trying to trying to make stuff happen along with the panel. I'm on Marty A. Johnson and everything. Follow Lavelle, because Lavelle trying to get side deals and all that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, and I'll follow Charlene on Candy, Candy, Licious Dreams, and Boom Sound Factory. Then I'm gonna find out about Lavelle stuff next week. Let me hang up on Facebook. Bye, Facebook. I'll see y'all Sunday, nine o'clock. Marty A. Johnson show. Yes. Hold on, I'm gonna log out and call him right back on. <laughs>